the Joe Rogan experience? What does it feel like? Yeah, look, it's been pretty crazy. You know, obviously on top of the water right now. But, yeah. Um, does it feel like you're vision. living in a fog, like a dream? A little bit, but I've had that vision, you know, for so long. You know, I've manifested for so long. And, um, you know, before this fight, even as a young amateur, I knew I'd be world champion. I knew one day my time would come and, you know, it finally did. Well, I was told about you a couple of years ago by my friend Vinny Shorman, uh, who's uh, big in the Muay Thai world, and Liam Harrison is a yeah. Muay Thai world champion. They were telling me how awesome you were years ago. But uh, until Saturday night of last week, the world, you know, they didn't know. They had to see it. Yeah, look, uh, both great guys. And um, I think it was 2018, I was in the in uh, wildcard gym sparring. And I'm in the ring and I see these two guys and they're watching. So I thought, you know, I'll put on a show for these guys. And let's see, they might be someone that can take me to the next level. They might be promoters, who knows? So I always want to put, put on a show. And uh, they couldn't believe it. And then I knew that they were coming on your show when I started speaking to them. And when they dropped my name on you, I was like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> now I'm here with you. you know, so. Well, your performance against Tiafimo was uh, spectacular. It was amazing. And, um, I mean, it was a, a fight where – how much of an underdog were you coming into that fight? I was a huge underdog, you know, 7-1 to one underdog. Wow. You know, betonline.ag had me 7-1. to one, So, you know um, – that just shows the, the adversity that you have to come through. You can be the massive underdog, but no matter what, you know, you get through it and you, you can win whatever you choose to do. Well, you were undefeated coming into that fight, but you just hadn't faced the same level of opposition that he had. And it didn't mean that you weren't capable of it. It just you just hadn't had the opportunity before. So it wasn't a seven to one like they didn't think you had the skills. It was seven to one that you just hadn't had that that moment in the sun before. I think because, that's right, I haven't had my moment yet leading into that fight, but, you know, he was coming off the big Lomachenko fight, the yeah. big win there, what he'd done in that fight, so impressive. He knocked out Richard Comey as well, so the hype, the, the, the noise that he was making, this was just going to be a normal mandatory fight, you know, that took so long to make, and um, he was supposed to just do the business and move on to something bigger, but you know, that hunger that I had, you know, that, that tunnel vision, to show who I am, to show how great I am. And I had to go through it all in that fight, you know, from the cuts to being put down in round 10. But I knew that this is my greatness now, how, how good I can be and show the world and shock the world. It is, you definitely did shock the world. It is a reoccurring theme in boxing and in all combat sports when someone takes an opponent lightly and they go in thinking they're just going to steamroll this guy and then they get met with reality. I mean, it's happened so many times in fighters' careers. And then there's also the other reoccurring theme, a guy like yourself who has his eyes on the prize, who's completely focused, and people are counting them out, and then they rise to the occasion and become a superstar. And that's what happened to you. You, you see it many times. And, and I feel that he didn't take me lightly because he was in great shape. He was in unbelievable condition. I felt as we led into the fight and we had that first press conference – where we looked into each other's eyes, and I saw that the, you know, a, a guy who it came too fast, and you needed to be matched with someone that was not going to take a step backwards, and the whole thing was this whole preparation. I was never going to take one step backwards. I never gave him that that inch, and even in the fight, I never gave him that inch. I was always there to be dominant, and I felt like he was a it was a bully kind of character, you know, mm. where he bullied Lomachenko, he bullied Komi, yeah, he bullied all his his past opponents. But, you know, I've come from bullying. I was an overweight kid at a young age. I've been bullied all my life. You, you were know? overweight? I was overweight. I used to be 135 pounds at like 10 years of age until I fell into boxing. So, you know, I knew it straight away. I go, okay, I know how to stand up to this guy. I know what I've got to do in this fight. And he saw how serious I was. So, you know, we, we, we stayed focused. We kept the tunnel vision. And we, uh, we've done the business. Well, you did a beautiful job of boxing him as well. I mean, you stayed in the pocket and cut angles. You landed beautiful combinations. That one right hand in the first round, though, really set the tone for that fight. When you sat him down at the end of the first and dropped him, and it was just, and, and it was a hard right hand. I mean, it was a beautiful right hand. And when you see his eyes roll back and he drops and he gets up and he's like, what the fuck just happened? 
that was a giant wake up call and it really set the tone for the rest of the fight. Yeah, it did. Um, I went into that that first round. I knew he'd be very emotional. I knew he took it so personal. And leading up to the whole fight week, when I kept getting asked, "Is this personal for you?" because I knew I knew it was so personal for him. So no, this is business for me. This is this is another fight. This is what I love to do. Doesn't matter who's in in that side of the ring for, uh, fighting against me. And um, I knew I had to get his respect straight away. He would come out crazy. I stayed composed. I landed some really good short shots on the uh, on the inside in that first round. And like the great customer I said to Muhammad Ali when he fought George Foreman, he goes, "How am I going to beat this guy? How, how can I beat this puncher?" And Cus goes, "Hit him with the right hand." In the first round, hit him with your best right hand and show him that, hey, I can punch as well. And I had that in my head. You know, I, I have the great book by Customato and I have it highlighted. And before I went to the arena, I went over it, I showed it to, my, to just have it in my head. What an um, amazing mind he yeah. had. Customato's mind for boxing and for the psychology of boxing was just so incredible. You know, and the fact that Mike Tyson found that man when he was 13 years old, yeah. it's almost like destiny, you know? And you know what? I, I believe that everything in life is destiny. You know, I look at my road to, to get to the championship. It's just, it's just falling into place. But with destiny, you need to work hard. You need to, you know, take it in your own hands as well. But everything's meant to be, and that right hand was meant to be. And I said it to my team, I go, you're watching the first round, I'm going to catch him early. I'm going to hurt him with something because I knew I was looking for that right hand. And when he came out crazy and he, you know, he was heavy on the front foot, he tried to fake the jab and I saw that front foot right there. I knew his head wouldn't move. I go, okay, mm. here it is. Here's that shot I've been dreaming about my whole life. <sighs> Bang. I let I it go like it. a lightning strike. Let's take a look at it. Jamie, show me that punch because that was just so beautiful. I screamed. When I was at home and I watched it, yeah, I it yelled was, out. I was by myself, I sitting the, in the living room. Oh! The whole world just jumped yeah. up. And like, okay, now oh we got to fight God. because I don't think many expected me to even stand a chance in the first round. You know, they were so vocal about one round, one round, especially mm. his dad. Well, but, his dad made a huge bet. Didn't he bet $100,000 that he was going to knock you out within two rounds? Yeah, well, I want to find out the person he bet Here against because... Here it is. Take a look at this and yeah. take it in. See that nice, short left beautiful hook left yeah. hook. Well, it's, you were in front of him, but you weren't there. Yeah. That was what was beautiful about it. Like your head movement, like right there, that angle. God, it's just gorgeous box. Here it is. Right here, baby. Boy. Bank! Oh, my goodness. And I saw it in his eyes as soon as I landed that shot and he got up. He thought, what the fuck was that? Yeah, you can see it right there. He's like, whoa. Yeah, now we're in a fight. And then the, the fake smile. And this shot is... I landed here, bang. Yeah. I was a little bit off balance. But that shot there was, was probably mm -hmm. more devastating than the, the original shot. And then I'm just going off. I had to say it. I said, you know, now I'm here. One round. Is that what you said to him? That's what I said. One round. Okay. Oh, my god. Now goodness. we're in a fight. It was an amazing performance.